Hello YouTube, welcome back to the garage. Just a quick video on my first impressions of the shovel head. As I have mentioned before, if you've watched any of the previous videos, this is my first Harley Davidson. So I've got very little to compare it to in the Harley range. Uh, so these are just general observations for a, a newcomer to ownership of a shovel head. So, where do I begin? Well, the first and most obvious thing, I think, is the weight. Now, I'm no longer in the first flush of youth, uh, and I do find it a struggle moving this thing around. Now, I believe it's about 300 kilograms in weight, something like that. I don't know what that is in pounds. I should know, but I don't. Um, I do know that my Bonneville is about 190, so it's one hell of a difference between the classic Bonnie and this old shovel. So moving around the garage is a bit of a strain, you've got to be careful. And then that weight transfers itself onto the road, but fortunately, in my opinion, it's only really apparent at very low speeds. And once you get moving, although you never lose that feeling of uh, great weight, it has a degree of poise. It feels planted, it's solid. Uh, it carries it well, I think, when it gets moving. I was surprised, in fact, how well it carries it when it's moving. So once you get over like 10 miles an hour, it's fine, it really is. Now, the engine vibrates, I was expecting that. All my other bikes vibrate, this vibrates. What I wasn't expecting is that, although it's quite grunty, quite powerful in a torquey sense, it isn't really gut-bustingly so. I really expected stump-pulling, massive torque, um, and it isn't. Uh, it, it, up against the British Twin, I really think the British Twin would just leave it standing in terms of speed and torque. So that was a surprise, but I mean that's more to do with my ignorance than uh, anything to do with Harley Davidson's. It is a torquey motor, don't get me wrong, it has got good pull at low speed, you just open the throttle and you chug 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 away. Um, and I'm not a fast rider far from it in fact. So for my riding style it actually suits me perfectly because it, it's lazy, easy going, unthreatening, uh, which is fine at this time in my life. I'm quite happy with that. So it's good. I like it. Don't get me wrong. Those comments are not negative. They're merely observations. So other observations, starting from the front really, the banana brake is massively criticised, I know I've read loads of stuff about how terrible it is. I rebuilt this one, rebuilt the master cylinder, rebuilt the caliper, and it's fine, in my opinion, absolutely fine. It's got a decent amount of bite, a reasonable amount of power, and at the sort of speeds that I'm riding around at, like 60 miles an hour or so, um, it's a perfectly good brake. I'm quite happy with it. The rear brake uh, is more of a steadying brake. It isn't as powerful, which is probably a good thing, um, given the length of the brake pedal. I think you'd be locking it up every day if it wasn't uh, slightly milder. So combined, perfectly acceptable brakes. I'm sure if you were uh, using this two up, or loaded with uh, luggage or all that sort of stuff. It may not be quite as good, I accept that. But for me, riding about, the speeds I ride about at, it's fine, it really is. Front forks are okay. I live down a cobbled road, the bottom out on a cobbled road. Uh, but otherwise, under normal circumstances, I live in a, an area filled with uh, hills and twisty roads, quiet twisty roads. Uh, and the handling 
it's surprisingly good. It, uh, it's no sports bike, obviously, but it's steady. It tracks through well. I've not grounded anything, but again, that's probably because I'm not particularly fast. Uh, it's a competent, if unspectacular, ride in that respect. And again, perfectly suited to me. I'm quite happy with that. It's not a problem at all. Now, comfort-wise, the seat's great. Big, wide, excellent. The bars are good height. The only issue, and it's more of an issue with me than it is with the bike, is a standard electric ride. We've had a pillar seat up here somewhere, a good, good few inches taller than this. So the combination of a low seat and my legs stretching forward to operate the controls is actually uncomfortable because I have bad hips, detached tendons, I won't go into the details but they're bad. So rather than having the factory higher seat which would give you a 90 degree leg bend even with mid mount controls and then high bars which I would imagine would be supremely comfortable, this has a more lying back feet forward type feel uh, which you know 10 years ago would, wouldn't have been a problem and in fact that may be the deciding factor in whether I keep this bike or not because unless I can get used to that and I can re-educate my limbs to accept that as a normal position it's going to have to go because I end up in uh, some considerable pain after a couple of hours on this but again, that's me, that's not the bike. So, noise-wise, the um, decibel killers I fitted have reduced the noise. It's still a noisy bike. You're still going to hear it coming. Uh, but that's no bad thing, in my opinion. I, would, I prefer a slightly noisier bike than the Whisper Quiet Modern ones, to be perfectly honest. So, to sum up the riding experience, I like it. Don't get me wrong, some, this may sound slightly negative, some of this, but it's not. I like it. It's got a classic feel, a classic ride. It's safe. It does what you need it to do. And it's good fun, which you cannot underestimate. Because um, I, I have had other bikes which are perfectly competent and it's boring as ditch water, dull as ditch water, really dull. This is anything from dull. This is an engaging motorcycle. So I'm very, very happy with it in that respect. So, having gone through the happy bits, there are a few problems, as always. The Speedo, which you saw being rebuilt in the video series, if you haven't seen that, have a look. Uh, or repaired rather than rebuilt. The actual uh, Speedo needle records the mileage, it appears to be accurate. Uh, you know. When, Seems to show 55-60 when I think I'm doing 55-60. Unfortunately, the trip doesn't work, uh, and I need the trip to work. I, I can't live without a working trip. Um, and also, the main odometer is not recording the miles travelled either. So that's a no-no. So I'm going to have to get another uh, another clock. The neutral light, which was working perfectly, has now decided to stay on all the time. It's not the switch, so it must be picking up an earth somewhere else and earthing out through that to remain on. The oil light switch came on when I was riding out one day. I checked that the oil was still circulating, which it was, and the circulation appeared good and strong. Um, so I carefully rode home, and there was a bit of uh, crud stuck in the bottom of the uh, oil pressure switch which I removed and blew the switch clean uh, and that seems to be functioning properly again so I'm assuming that was the problem. Um, the horn comes on randomly on its own because of these ridiculously poor little push buttons. It was a new push button, it was time and ease and it's absolute garbage. So I think I will rig up a separate push button switch on the handlebars to take care of the horn and just ignore the original uh, the original Harley switch. It's just, they really are so poor that I 
can't face trying to repair another one or try and get another one working. That was a new switch, it's just garbage. Um, the battery's not in good condition, but I mean, that's nothing to do with the bike, that's just standard second hand bike. Everything else works, it starts on the button. Uh, what more can you ask for a classic bike? But you can just turn it on, hit the button, and ride. Um, so that's all good. The engine, well, in fact, I won't mention any more about the engine because I've got to show you something down here. So let me just reposition you and we'll have a look down below for the next part of our little uh, exploration of how the shovel head's going. So I'll just move you and show you what's down here. Ta da! Oil and lots of it. Now, initially I wasn't sure where it was coming from. I took the under tray off, the metal protector plate that goes underneath the engine, and the engine, amazingly, is uh, dry. I did expect it to leak a bit, but it's dry. And this stuff is all from the gearbox output shaft seal, which, having done a bit of, uh, having done a bit of research, uh, it's a very common problem with these four-speed old shovels. Uh, now the weather is still quite good at the minute. We're talking mid-September here. It's a lovely sunny day outside. I'll probably get some dry, reasonable riding weather for another six weeks yet or so. Um, so basically I'm doing nothing with it. I'm just going to keep pouring oil in and keep let it leaking out. But when the weather goes downhill, all that primary side is going to have to come off because it's leaking quite a lot, disappointingly so. Um, so I can't leave it. So that will be a video at some point in the future. Basically, can a complete novice successfully fix a leaking four speed transmission? We shall see. I'll certainly be giving it a go. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with this engine. It doesn't leak oil, it doesn't smoke, it doesn't rattle excessively. It seems to vibrate a bit, but I was expecting that. So, when I do the primary, I will probably do an exploratory check on the top end as well, just out of interest. But anyway, that's for the future. So there you go, that's where we're up to with the, uh, with the shovel. Some bits of it may sound a negative, some bits of it are most definitely positive. If it wasn't for my hips, I would definitely be keeping it. Uh, so, until the next update, we'll leave it there, I think. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please tell your friends, forums, whatever, I don't know. Anyone. Tell them I'm here. Tell them the garage is open for business. Thanks a lot. <laughs>